one of the first things I want to start with is dynamic mirroring. Start with a sketch and center line, and I leave that center line selected while I go in and turn on dynamic mirror entities. Now notice that we get marks on the ends of the center line, and everything that we put on one side of the center line is automatically mirrored to the other side of the center line. These have sketch relations that make them mirrored, so you notice I select the center point, it's got the symmetric, symmetric, symmetric. Even the diameters are linked, so you got a symmetric relation there. No matter how you change this, it, it winds up symmetrical. That's the dynamic mirroring. You do that when you know that everything that you, uh, you mirror on one side, you're going to want automatically on the other. I'm just going to get something on the screen here, a little bit of solid material. Let's look at the functions that are available to us. One of the things that's nice to have with a linear pattern is if I make a new file, I can select my template called axes. And if you don't have this one, it'd be a nice idea to make one for yourself so that each of the X, Y, and Z directions has an axis. And you can pattern along that axis without needing an edge or a sketch or something else. And so this is, from a parent-child point of view, patterning along an axis like this is pretty bomb-proof. It's never going to uh, go away on you. Circular pattern, same sort of thing. Mirror. You've already got the planes in here for mirroring about your standard planes, so that's good. Curve-driven pattern does pretty much what it says. Here I used a sketch, which was just an offset from the outside of the shape, and I used that sketch to pattern the feature. But notice that the feature is kind of offset from the pattern, and it maintains that offset so that it's always above this line. If we take a look at the uh, definition of the curve-driven pattern, there's a reason for that. It's the difference between the transform curve and the offset curve. Now, if I click on the offset curve, everything stays to the same side. In this case, the top ones would come down, and they go inside the curve all the way around. There's a lot of things that you can do, patterns, and in, in particular, the curve-driven pattern. Sketch-driven pattern, you just put down a bunch of points. It's very convenient because it's as random as you want it to be. Table-driven pattern is kind of the same thing, except you're using X, Y coordinates instead of points. Um, a fill pattern, let's take a quick look at, a, at an example like that. Okay, here I've, I've created a, a random curve, just a, a, a spline that encloses an area. And I filled that area with a certain type of feature. Now, if we take a look at how that works, we select the boundary, you select the feature down here, and then you tell it what type of pattern that you'd want to create. Now, some of these are going to depend very much on the settings. So the margin is, is what's the minimum distance between the feature and the boundary. This angle has to do with with the uh, sub pattern within uh, within the pattern feature. So in this case, it's a it's a set of features, and then the next set of features is slightly offset, and so on. And they're offset at a sixty degree angle. Now we could change this to a forty five degree angle, and it would uh, rotate that pattern slightly. Okay, that's the fill pattern. Very convenient thing for, uh, for ver various types of situations. And then we have the variable pattern. Variable pattern, I, I don't think, is ready for uh, prime time yet. I did a lot of examples on this, and if we, we take a look at, at this one, you know, um, I was trying to pattern these flower things all the way around the bottle. But uh, what happens is, you know, at best you can get it to go around like 270 degrees. And then there's something that, that happens with, uh, with SolidWorks and flipping planes. And uh, you just, you cannot get this thing to go all the way around. I simplified it to some extent, I think, on a cylinder. The variable pattern enables you to specify through a chart where you want features to be patterned around a part. This can be... On a, on a cylindrical part or 
like we showed before on a non-cylindrical part. It's, the feature itself is not yet fully reliable. If you're looking to go around, say, 180 degrees on a part, you're okay. But if you're trying to take your pattern all the way around and your part is not cylindrical, if it's got a more general shape like this, then the feature is probably not going to work for you. you go back to the uh, cylindrical part. This one, for whatever reason, it might be that you have to be very careful about the setup, the parametric setup of how your planes work. In any case, I got it, got it to work here on a regular cylinder, whereas you're probably not going to get it to work on a uh, non-cylindrical part. We take a look at this again to see how the table was, uh, was set up. We look at uh, editing the table. All we've done is done an increment on the first angle that goes around the cylinder. And then we did a, a second variable that positions the height. And all it's doing is rebuilding this feature at every instance on the table. So I've created a single feature and given that feature an angle around the cylinder and a distance along the axis of the cylinder. And then the third dimension here is to spin the flower incrementally so that each one, each flower is at a different angle. And it's easy to see if you take a look at it, you go, as you progress along here, you can see that the, the flower is gradually rotating around its own center as it rotates around the center of the cylinder. In any case, don't waste a lot of time on that, but you should probably do a little experimenting if you are going to try to do it. There are some other features, such as a very sketch, that you should, uh, you should be aware of, of how to make these things work. In this case, we've created the rectangle in the center and an oval on the outside, and this is all with a circular pattern using the very sketch option really what it's doing is uh, is driving a single feature that has parametric end conditions so that it's controlled by the outside and an inside sketch and then it's patterning that as it goes around that's the very sketch i've got a couple of examples of that in here here's another one okay in this case, it's a linear sketch, but, but the end conditions on these, uh, on these features have been, uh, have been altered slightly. Well, not necessarily the end conditions, because they're, they're all just through cuts. But it's the sketch itself that has been driven by reference geometry, a reference sketch.